Drastic measures being taken to deal with the surge in COVID-19 cases and the lag in vaccine distribution. Plus, a new year, a new law. What you need to know before, be before getting behind the wheel tomorrow. And forget all those resolutions. We'll tell you why this year a reset is being recommended instead. 12 of 12 starts right now. 12 minutes, no commercials. We're on TV and on the go on the 12 News app as well. Our website and on YouTube. Hey, it's Ryan here. Happy New Year's Eve. We do need to start with the latest on the coronavirus, though, which is grim news. We're ending the year on a low note. The Department of Health Services reporting 7,718 new cases and sadly 146 new deaths. That brings us to more than 520,000 total cases this year and more than 8,000 deaths in Arizona. Meanwhile, Arizona hospitals are having to make even more changes to keep up with the influx of COVID-19 patients. Team 12's Jen Wall joins us with what Banner Health is having to do now. Yeah, and as we've been telling you throughout this week, Banner Health says they're diverting patients at some of their hospitals. That means they're not taking emergency transport to some of those locations. And if you walk in for care, your wait times could potentially be longer. In addition to that, Banner now says they're halting elective surgery starting tomorrow. Again, that's because of an influx of patients this week. Part of the reason for the strain is COVID-19 patients. COVID-19 hospitalizations in Arizona have been rising since October and hit more than 4,500 this week. And COVID patients can stay in the hospital three to four times longer than non-COVID patients. Banner says the unusual part of this diversion is the number of hospitals doing it at the same time. Dr. Brandon Lawrence, an ER doctor in the West Valley, has been watching the recent diversions firsthand. That's not a a choice anyone that got into medicine wants to ever have to make. I think we're going to be facing those decisions that no one wants to make. And Banner Health tells us they're not to that triage point yet, but with these diversions recently, it's a sign that that could be coming if things don't slow down soon. Stay with 12 News for updates. For now, we're in Gilbert, Jen Wall, 12 News. All right, Jen, thanks. We're now two weeks into Arizona's vaccine rollout, and the state is dramatically failing to meet its goals to help Governor Ducey has now issued an executive order to increase vaccine access for Arizonans. Team 12's Josh Sanders has more on how that is expected to work. Everyone in uh, public health agrees. We don't believe that vaccine sitting in a freezer does anybody good. Arizona's COVID-19 vaccine plan is getting a makeover. Governor Doug Ducey issuing a new executive order after a failure to meet initial expectations. Since the first vaccine was administered two weeks ago, only 18 to 20 percent of health care workers have received their first dose, meaning out of the 314,000 doses on hand, so far only 57,000 getting that shot of hope. We want it in people's arms. The order directs ADHS to implement a state plan with the goal to provide uniform access to the vaccine. There's a need to rapidly expand access to those vaccination sites, as well as working with those, their statewide providers. Providers like Walgreens and CVS. Arizona is following a national trend. To date, only 2.6 million have been vaccinated. Health experts say that's not nearly enough to reach herd immunity by next summer. If we want to get there within six months, we need to be doing three and a half million vaccinations a day. Dr. Kara Chris says she's optimistic Arizona will get there. There's a lot of different things that have to come together for us to do that, but we are optimistic. In Phoenix, Josh Sanders, 12 News. So first Colorado, now California. The new variant of the coronavirus first reported in the UK is starting to pop up here in the states. Health experts say this strain appears more contagious, but there's no evidence that it's any more deadly. They add that new vaccines should work against it. We have new information about COVID-19 and kids this afternoon. The American Academy of Pediatrics and the Children's Hospital Association is reporting more than 2 million children in the U.S. have been diagnosed with COVID-19. One million of those cases coming within the last month and a half. Children now account for about 12% of all COVID-19 cases nationwide. If you're looking to travel internationally, eventually, you may be required to bring proof of a vaccination for your getaway. Smartphone apps are being are creating uh, are being created to allow users to upload COVID-19 test results and eventually proof of vaccination. Meanwhile, Australian airline Qantas has already announced that it will start requiring the COVID-19 vaccine for all passengers on international flights. 
And we recognize that new information is coming out every day. It's hard to keep up with everything, but you can find the latest details about COVID and how it's affecting you and your family in Arizona on the 12 News app. Hashtag most clicked. Here are the stories piquing everyone's interest right now. Millions of Americans have started or will soon see an additional $600 in their bank accounts from the federal government. However, a bill to provide even more relief to Americans supported by the president and Democrats has stalled in the Senate. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell took the Senate floor on Wednesday, criticizing the House bill, increasing direct payments to $2,000. The Senate returns to work today to continue that debate. Second, Gilligan's Island actress Dawn Wells has died from complications of coronavirus. Wells played Mary Ann on the show. The lovable, red-haired, pigtailed girl next door. She beat out 350 other actresses to win that role, but she was also well-known beyond acting. She served as a producer, author, and a motivational speaker. And our third most clicked story, a pet food recall you need to know about. If you feed your pets sport mix high energy dog or cat food, you're going to want to throw that out right away. The company that makes the food says it may contain deadly levels of a toxin produced by mold. The FDA says at least 28 days dogs have died and eight others have become sick so far. All right, time to check in now with Crystal for our final forecast of 2020. Hey, Crystal. I think we are all excited to finally slam the 2020 weather book shut because this is overachieving if I ever saw it. Hey, Phoenix, did I miss anything here? Sheesh, had to squeeze in all the records that we achieved, including the most 100s, the most 110s, the most 115s, the most mornings in 90 degree territory. We set 26 record warm lows, 33 record highs. It was the hottest summer ever, the hottest monsoon, and the hottest fall. Oh, and those are just the temperature records, Phoenix. It is also going to be one of our driest years in terms of our rainy days. We only had 15 rainy days, which is a new record low. And Phoenix has company. For the entirety of the year, Flagstaff, Tucson, Page all wound up with totals that were the lowest ever in recorded history. For today, dry weather will be the theme with the exception of Northern Arizona. It's a cloudy affair for all, but in Northern Arizona, we have that opportunity to shake out some snow showers there as a storm system pools to the east. That's what's pulling in the clouds and knocking down temperatures below average across the state. For your midnight temperatures, we could see the last snowflake fly in the mountains. Temperatures there chilly in the 20s, 40s for our lower deserts. High pollution advisories in place for the valley. Those below average temperatures will spill into your New Year's Day, but our skies will brighten up and over the weekend and into next week, we'll bring those temperatures up to near seasonal standards. Oh, that looks great, Crystal. Thanks. In other news, President-elect Joe Biden and Dr. Jill Biden are scheduled to give their last interview of the year in New York Times Square on Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve with Ryan Seacrest 2021. According to a statement from producers, the Bidens will share an inspiring message as we come together to close out 2020 and look ahead with hope to 2021. And here in Arizona, most New Year's Eve celebrations will be virtual, obviously because of the virus, including three of the more unique ball drops, such as the Cowboy Boot Drop in Prescott, the Pine Cone in Flagstaff, and the Deuce of Clubs in Sholo. To check out how to view those, you can head over to our website, 12news.com. And as we look ahead to a new year, we're being given permission to skip those New Year's resolutions. Team 12's Trisha Hendricks explains why this year experts suggest maybe we just hit the reset button instead. My most important resolution is to welcome my new granddaughter on the 1st of January. To continue to stay sober. Some people are ready to take on lofty goals, while others are excited for new beginnings. I don't have any New Year's resolutions yet. 2020 was too rough. After such a challenging and stressful year, most Arizonans we spoke with are ready to say goodbye to 2020 and never look back. Yeah, it's finally coming to an end. I'm just looking forward to things slowly, I guess, as everybody says, getting back to normal. Coming up with New Year's resolutions to begin a bright 2021. Just to have a better year. Stop eating junk food. I need to lose some weight. It's a catch-22 on if you stick with them or not. And while 
While the new year is typically a time to create a fresh start and assess areas of our lives for change and improvement. To start working as a CNA. Experts like clinical psychologist Dr. Sophie Lazarus says we should focus on goals we can really achieve. When stress is more prolonged and chronic, um, essentially our body never gets the message that the stress response can calm down. Lazarus says rather than a sweeping change requiring major adjustments to your life. How can you better take care of yourself physically and mentally? in small, doable, incremental ways. For your resolution reset in 2021, the best thing you can do may just be to give yourself a break. Stepping out of autopilot, being aware of what's happening in the present moment. Small changes for a greater amount of success overall in 2021. Trisha Hendricks, 12 News. Well, that's great advice, Trisha. Thanks. As we all get ready to ring in the new year, the Scottsdale Fire Department wants to make sure we're doing it safely. When it comes to fireworks, remember, when you go to light them, make sure you are not near any desert areas. Also, under no circumstances should you be setting them off on publicly owned property, like the street, for instance. And when finished, place those fireworks in a bucket of water. And according to the Fire Prevention Association, on New Year's Eve, there are more than 19,000 fires reported each year across the country and 9,000 fireworks-related injuries, so please be careful. More than a third of those injuries are kids, so be safe as we say goodbye to 2020. And just a reminder that Arizona's new texting and driving law goes into effect tomorrow. That means you cannot use your hands to make or answer a call while driving, but you can use hands-free mode. You can't read or send text messages while driving, but you can do so while stopped at a red light. And you can use your phone to call 911 if need be. Fines will range between $75 and $149 for the first offense. Any offense after that will cost you between $150 and $250.